Uh, hello everybody, and my question of today is where are you guys watching from? Really, almost always it is Texas that is winning. So let me know in the comment section down below where you are from. Let's try it again. Also guys, make sure you check out the Growth Masters Academy. A link is in the description below. It's my second channel on Instagram stuff, which is my main job. Then, something which I consider to be very, very interesting, Ripple CEO warns companies to hold Bitcoin facing the Biden administration. So, ooh, that, uh, that sounds rather interesting if you ask me. According to Ripple CEO, Joe Biden may have an eye on Bitcoin's alleged hostility to the climate. Public companies could be forced to pay attention to new federal regulations. And really, guys, whenever I read this, I'm like, don't people understand that whenever a new president comes in, you got to be really, really careful for new regulation or at least different types of regulation. And when I considered that, I, I assumed that the bigger companies, I mean, if Brad is, then the bigger companies are aware of that, too. You know, so this is mostly a warning to the small companies, I guess, who might have never really thought about such situations or the guys that may be new to this market or something like that because well if you and i thought about it then i think almost anybody talked about it and and this mostly comes down to a ecological perspective where as i said before in this tweet garlinghouse took up the narrative repeatedly propagated by ripple in recent weeks that bitcoin is harmful to the climate while a greener alternative is available with the xrp ledger and xrp token the Ripple CEO speculated that Biden might have an eye on Bitcoin's alleged climate hostility and highlighted Square as a company that may have to watch out for new federal regulations. Quote, Biden to require public companies to disclose climate change related activities and GHG emissions in their operations. Love to see the action on climate change first NYDFS. Now this public companies holding Bitcoin ahem, Square may want to pay attention. So, yeah. It's uh, it's kind of interesting that that he's taking such a leap or such a such a jab I should call it at the uh, I guess other established entities because <laughs> you'd think they would know right but maybe it's just to show that Ripple is not really concerned about climate change because they're on a good path maybe it's just to show dominance in that sense could be as well then something which I found very nice to read as well Detroit millionaire Pil Bill Pulte Pult whatever, says Wall Street finally warming up to Bitcoin. Philanthropist Bill Polt says it's better late than never for Wall Street to embrace Bitcoin. We all kind of know it's coming, all right? We all know it's right now at a, at a very big start, but piece by piece, we're going to get there. And I, I'm not really worried whether or not it's going to happen. The only question on my mind is exactly when it, it's all going to unfold and what companies first after which ones, because... We all, I think, understand as well that it is going to be a domino effect, all right? There are going to be a couple of companies who's going to join first, and then they'll trigger a couple of other ones, which will trigger more, and that will go exponentially. Polt, who's mainly known for his Twitter philanthropy, also teased another crypto giveaway. Who, who cares about that? Wall Street vets get behind Bitcoin. I mean, yeah, we saw Drunken Miller now. We saw a couple of other guys as well. I actually said all of that in my previous video today, right? Where I told you guys that uh, right now it's getting pretty damn crazy with all these guys hopping on in. And it's a lot of billionaires already that, that are uh, excited about crypto. And even though they may have only gotten it like 1% or so, it's about the bigger picture, right? At least in my opinion. It's about the, the idea that these guys are liking what you're investing in. If, for example, Warren Buffett were to say, yeah, and, and you had, had, for example, invested in, uh, you know, choose something, I don't know, a Detroit stock. All of a sudden, he, Warren Buffett is also like, yeah, I like Warren, uh, Detroit stock. You'd be very happy, right? And the same kind of goes for these bigger companies or these big billionaires. If they get into it, it kind of is another sign of trust in your, in your investment or in your idea. It just feels very nice to know that they're following you or they're you know, excited about what you're going for. Or I hope that made a little bit of sense. Moving further, Ethereum stakers commit 50,000 ETH to upcoming launch. And by the way, guys, make sure you press the like button and subscribe if you are enjoying this video. Users have started putting their funds into Ethereum's much-awaited 2.0 upgrade, but the push must continue or another delay could be on the cards. Well, as of this point, I don't really think there's any, any, any question that is going to be going well. 
They're saying the number is nearly 10% or 9.42 of the total amount required before Ethereum 2.0 is launched. Yet, I think the closer we get, you know, how, uh, the crazier people will actually get into it. But the numbers suggest that retail crowd has not yet indulged in the deposit contract, which is again to get this all started. 13,888 Ethereum has come from just one address, meaning about 30% of the entire 2.0 stake has been just one user. The second highest depositor is 6,400 ETH and the third one is 3,200, meaning 46% of the network is currently held by three users as of press time. But the largest deposit was made, oh, the third largest deposit was made by Ethereum co-founder Vitalik Buterin, which kind of confuses me. I would think he'd put in more, all right, but maybe it's because he doesn't want to rule the network or at least make it seem like that since he has quite a lot of Ethereum. Maybe he wants to wait, I guess, for it to roll out further. And for example, when there's, let's say, you know, 400,000 in, he puts in another 40,000 or so to to get it further along the way. But at least it doesn't look like he then owns 40% or something like that of the network, which is definitely not what they would want. Now, this will most likely come along rather quickly, though, as we uh, leap closer to the end. However, it is a question that's on a lot of people's minds, like how much will they be depositing? If we keep on going with this pace, we won't get there. You know, that's the that's the bad part. But uh, I'm also going to be joining this, I think. I, I haven't done it yet, but I'm thinking about it because, well, I mean, there, there's, only, there's only good sides to it, right? What's the bad side to it? Then, JP Morgan bullish on Bitcoin's growth as institutional investment pours in. It's really what I've said before, but it's important to understand that JP Morgan is bullish in all of this. However, on a different end, you can see it a little bit at the bottom here, but it's also in, the, um, I believe, here on the right. No, it's the next one. Here on the right. There's a lot going on with PayPal scams right now, and specifically crypto PayPal scams are getting really, really heavy. And the reason I'm, I'm bringing this up is because well, in my comment section, there are a lot of scammers, right? But that's even before PayPal has now announced a lot of these things. And if PayPal, I guess, goes into crypto, I think we'll see more PayPal crypto-related scams happening as well. And I think it's just really important that you guys are aware of that and hopefully watch out for it. Then to quickly get into Bitcoin, I still think we're on pace and we're still most likely on the same damn road. At least that's kind of what it's looking like over here at Bitcoin. Where it's just we tested. Again, we, we couldn't breach. So now we fell down a little bit again. And we're going to try it again and try it again. All right. A lot of guys were already screaming head and shoulder pattern. What I'm saying is, well, the big resi- or the big support lies here at about 13.8 or 13.9-ish. And that's worst case scenario. Most likely, though, we'll, I guess, stay above this about 14.6. We would have to look back all the way, though, to see exactly where those points lie. Uh, but but apparently, that's an important one or an interesting one to go for. And, yeah, I, I'm just thinking here that it's, it's, it's most likely just a matter of time before we breach it. There's not really a question or not whether we're going to go down. But even if we go down, it's just a small term thing. All right. I don't think the trend is going to switch over. I still think we're going to be breaking out. If we look at the weekly from, I guess, March up on forward, it's just all in all bullish. All right. And since this candle is going on since yesterday here, there's a very good chance that it will still end as a green candle, meaning, again, we'll, we'll most likely end up above here this week still. If we don't, not a problem because, as you can see, any chart has its downfalls. But even if we get something like this happening, which some people think is going to happen, where you test the zone, you can't get past it, right? You fall back down to the next zone, even fall back down to the next zone, but then boom, you still skyrocket to the to the freaking moon. That's kind of what happened, right? Over June and or over June 2019 and March 2020. That's that's basically what has happened. It could be that we fall back down one level, even two levels, and then break the next one, right? And that might might mean we have to wait a couple more months before uh, the big all-time high-breaking bull run. But consider this, all right? We're just 30% away from all-time high. If you're not in profit right now, you might have a little bit of an issue, all right? You might, because um, I guess maybe it's time to get yourself a better position then. If 15000 doesn't bring you in profit, yeah, I, I think we, we got to look for yourself at a strategy to buy a little bit lower to DCA your way down. All right, analysis. Bitcoin can go 10 times from current price if November breaks monthly all-time high close. Well, I would just say if we break above 14.7 or so, or at least if we stay there, if we close there, I think on the daily could be enough already. Nah. Yeah, maybe on the daily could be enough as we haven't done it. And previously it has shown that, I guess, one daily candle here is all that it needs to 
uh, continue the trend, there's a good chance if you just breach it once and stay above there, close the candle, that we can continue on. 10 times though? I don't really think so. Uh, in just this one move. Maybe over time, yeah, but that's really out of the question. Uh, we all know that that's going to happen, but 10 times right now brings you to 150,000. That's a little bit far away, guys. That's uh, a pretty damn far point away. I would say the first next big one is going to be looking at about 30,000 for Bitcoin. But 150, that's... Uh, that's definitely still some miles away, so I wouldn't really count on that for just now. And if it does, we'll, we'll talk about it next time, though. It's not for right now. That, that's important. UK Treasury drawing up stablecoin regulations. More and more FUD for Ripple's, uh, I guess, destination, most likely. Bubba Cugs and a couple of the guys were saying UK or London is ready, right? Well, this actually has two sides. It's not as bad as some guys have said. Why? Because... Here you can see, new technologies such as stablecoins, privately issued digital currencies, could transform the way people store and exchange their money, making payments cheaper and faster. The UK will also implement a green taxonomy, a common framework for determining which activities can be defined as environmentally sustainable, which will improve understanding of the impact of firms' activities and investments on the environment and support our transition to a sustainable economy. That's the Treasury's plan to enact a green taxonomy. We know... Looking at it from this perspective, I'm just thinking they want to kind of take away Ripple's competition with a lot of the stable coins and things like that, and I guess bring bring life into the freaking green coins like Ripple is trying to make, right? Ripple's really, really heavily going on with all this um, with all this green stuff or environment stuff. The UK, you know, the, the Treasury came out here to say that they're want to making that a an important thing as well. Looking at it from that perspective, well, it looks a lot like uh, <laughs> like what we're seeing here is, uh, is is all kind of planned out, or at least following Ripple's guidelines and ideas. Talking about Ripple, something interesting happened. Zeppe to launch non-fungible crypto token and marketplace in India. Zeppe, a Bitcoin and crypto asset exchange based in India, has announced plans to launch a non-fungible token, NFT. The NFT has been named Dazzle, the name of a herd of zebras. A non-fungible token is a cryptographic token that represents something unique and has individual characteristics that set them apart. Hence, non-fungible tokens are not mutually interchangeable. Owning a NFT is like owning a one-of-a-kind work of art or a collectible antique, according to the official press release. The interest in digital art or such things is growing. Dazzle NFTs are based on smart contracts built on the Ethereum network each Dazzle token will confer rewards to the owner, such as lower fees on the Zepay exchange, as well as discounts from partners such as e-commerce retailers, streaming services, and food deliveries, etc. As the new asset type which can benefit investors, artists, gamers, collectors, and creators of any unique and valuable digital content, NFTs like Zepay's Dazzle represent a new opportunity for innovation. I've been thinking about this one for a little while. Why? Well, because Ripple has earlier confirmed plans with or for ODL in India. And we also know Ripple has that partnership with Zepe. So I'm kind of wondering exactly how that's all going to be playing out here and exactly what, what the plan is going to be. But I, I think it's rather interesting, all right? I think it's rather freaking interesting. Here you can see a little bit of a, of a statistic. On the exchange Wazir X, the trading volume has reached an annual high of 12 mil. Furthermore, the trading volume for Zepe peaked on August 2nd with 8 mil in total, demonstrating the growing adoption of crypto in India and the market's potential for solutions like those offered by Ripple. We all know there's a demand right there. I mean, India is not always the most clear country for crypto, but they're kind of, you know, receiving off it as, well, they're, 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 allowing for a lot of things to pop up over there. So from that perspective, even though they might not be that welcoming because they ban a lot of things, they're also quite welcoming. And maybe Zeppe here X Ripple is going to be building something, which again, could be could be kind of cool. Or again, I guess XRP has that new connection to NFTs as well through Ethereum. Maybe that, maybe that, or maybe, you know, maybe they have some plans for it. We don't really know yet, but it's interesting to take a look at how the connections are being made. We also saw earlier today that there's a Microsoft connection, right? Do I have it open still? I think so. There's a Microsoft connection with Ripple now through DLocal. They're still doing a lot, even though it might not look like it. But don't let uh don't let the 
don't let your eyes deceive you, I should say, I guess. Don't let your eyes deceive you. But guys, that was it for today's video. Make sure you check out the Growth Masters Academy and make sure you press the like button and subscribe. I will see you guys again in another crypto video. We'll have to refresh even because I just posted another video a couple of hours ago. Let's see. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful. But yeah, make sure you press the like button on these videos too. I try my best to make them for you. And I'll see you guys again in another crypto video.